Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and welcome to this week's Pajama Story Time, Haverbytes version. Haverbytes is just a bite-sized version of our story time, just to give you a little break in your day and bring you some joy. So for tonight, we're going to read two books. First, we have Cowboy is Not a Cowboy, and this is by Gregory Barrington. Let's take a look at this cover here. That cow does not look so happy, and that looks very happy. Let's find out what's going on. Cowboy is not a cowboy. Welcome to Humdrum Farm, where nothing ever happens. Please drive slow. On Humdrum Farm, where nothing ever happens, chickens lay extraordinarily average eggs. There they have their egg measurements there, and there it is, right on average. Daily egg count, average. All average. Pigs roll in the mud only when necessary, never for fun. Roll in mud every hour. And goats eat very boring food except for one. Goat girl! <laughs> that is our fun-loving animal right there. It's a goat. While a, hum a humdrum goat would be satisfied eating a cardboard box, ew. goat girl practiced the art of French cooking. I present a ratatouille provençal with a caramelized onion souffle. Bon appetit! When the humdrum goats wouldn't play a game of kick the can with goat girl, you're not supposed to eat it. She invented her own game. Roar! There she is, dressed like a dinosaur, kicking the cans. And when the humdrum goats closed lookout rock over their fear of heights, danger, closed, no climbing. Goat girl found a new solution. Woohoo! There was nothing humdrum about goat girl. One humdrum day, she saw something new. Merrill actually wasn't new. He was the oldest animal on Humdrum Farm, but he kept to himself. Every morning, every night, through every type of weather. He was very humdrum. Here he is reading an encyclopedia of dictionaries. Snooze. Hello, cowboy. My name is Merle, and I am not a cowboy. Are you a cow? I am a bull. What is a bull? A bull is a cow who is a boy. See? You are a cowboy! Howdy, cowboy! Merrill was not amused. He proceeded to explain exactly why he was not a cowboy. I am not adventurous. I am not brave. I might even be allergic to horses. Things Merrill will do. Sit in a field. Things Merrill will not do. Run, ride horses, look for adventure. Goat Girl told Merrill that he could be a cowboy if he wanted to and proceeded to explain why with a persuasive 30 minute audiovisual presentation. The power of you. It didn't work. Listen, Goat Girl, for the last time, I am not a cowboy. It was true, Merrill was not a cowboy, but as a young bull, that was his dream. Look, there he is, dreaming of being a cowboy. Yeah, yeah, giddy up! A dream he had long forgotten. Because what happened? This horse threw him and it looked like he was gonna land in a cactus! Ow, ow, ow! A dream he didn't want to remember. <gasps> Another humdrum day. 
It would have stayed a humdrum day, except something unusual was happening on the farm. The farmer had forgotten to close the chicken coop. That was very un-humdrum. The chickens forgot about laying extraordinarily average eggs and were overcome by the only thought a free-range chicken could have. Crossing the road. A dangerous road. The other side cafe. And the other side of the road. Get it? Hide the chicken cross the road to get to the other side. Get it? <laughs> Goat Girl sprang into action to stop the chickens. Meryl did nothing. Goat Girl tried to round them up with her horse. Meryl did nothing. Goat Girl tried to distract them with her French cooking. Le Humdrum Cordon Bleu, chicken special. Oop, no. Specials for chickens. Free samples. Merrill still did nothing. Until he had had enough, it was time to do something. Howdy, ladies. Sorry to interrupt your trailblazing adventures, but that road down yonder is closed. I need to ask y'all to return to the farm in an orderly fashion. Thank you kindly. Meryl, you did it! You rounded up and saved the chickens from danger! You are a... Don't say it. Cowboy! The next day, everything was back to being ho-hum on Humdrum Farm. The chickens still laid extraordinarily average eggs. The pigs rolled in their mud only when necessary, never for fun. And the goats continued a diet of boring and bland food. But if you were quiet and listened closely, the fields of humdrum were beating with a new sound. One goat girl and one cowboy, who was not a cowboy, were both having a very unhumdrum good time. Things Merrill will do. Sit in a field, save chickens, play monster. New things to try with Merrill. Solve a mystery, bake a pie, launch a rocket. The end. That was Cowboy is Not a Cowboy by Gregory Barrington. Did you like that? I, I did. If you couldn't tell, I really did like it. But if you didn't like it, maybe you will like this next one. This is Bears Make the best reading buddies. And this is written by Carmen Oliver and illustrated by Jean Claude. Bears make the best reading buddies. And I just so happen to have a bear here with me to be my reading buddy. So it's gonna sit on my lap here while we read. Bears make the best reading buddies. beginning of the school year, Mrs. Fitz P. assigned reading buddies, but Adelaide didn't need one. She already had one of her own. Don't be scared, Adelaide coaxed. Come in. Look, that's an awfully big paw. Wait, Adelaide said. Bears make the best reading buddies, and I'll tell you why. Bears know how to sniff out a good book with their super-powered snouts. They are wild about adventures. Woohoo! And mysteries. Dun dun dun. And fairy tales. Ha ha They know how to build peaceful places where no one bothers you while you read. They sit side by side, knee to knee, and put the book between you so you both can see. Bears listen with their super sensitive ears while you sound out the words. And if you get frustrated, they wrap you up in warm bear hugs. Oh, and their claws are perfect page flipping tools. Rap. Uh, most of the time. But don't worry.
carry. They always carry a spare jar of honey for making repairs. Bears know you never run away from hard to pronounce words. They challenge you to look at the pictures and chew over the possibilities. And when you get it right, roar! They stand on their hind legs and roar so you'll keep going. Finally, when you come to the end of your book, bears are always hungry for more, especially books about salmon fishing and berry picking. Bears know that once you get a taste for books, you'll discover trail after trail of adventure and clamber to new heights. And that is why bears make the very best reading buddies, Adelaide finished. Well, don't just stand there, Adelaide, said Mrs. Fitzpee. Show that bear in. There he is. I'll read to you, Adelaide said. Then you can read to me. And when Adelaide started to read, Bear burrowed in and got lost in the story. The end. Bears make the best reading buddies. And you know what? Bears make some pretty good snuggle buddies too. So if you have a snuggle buddy, whatever it may be, grab it for our silly lullaby. Ready? I'll give you a second. Got your snuggle buddy? Grown up or a stuffy or a blanket or a pillow? Okay, all snuggled in. Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitzy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, it's time to say achoo. Oh, sorry. The chicken's in the bathtub, the closet full of sheep. The sneakers in the freezer are drifting off to sleep. Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitzy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, the owl was whispering. And with that, we say good night. And thank you, Sandra Boynton, for the use of your silly lullaby song, which we love so much. I hope you enjoyed tonight's pajama story time, and I hope to see you next week. Bye for now.